Best ball season is a brewing. What's up, IBT family? Tonight, we're going to be doing our first live draft of the season, Underdog Fantasy's The Big Board. I'm excited to take it down with y'all. We have a great episode planned, so let's kick back, relax. It's a new IBT podcast coming right at you. Because I've been in tune, out of touch, coming off the bench, trying to shake the bunch, check your stat line, see who's up, that over, under, hit too clutch. And I'm trying to avoid getting carried away with the jet sweet, sleeping on a trick play, predicting all of my moves like they seen every play. So I'm running it back, head down, get out of my way, and it's for the law with only one thing to do. I guess I'll say a prayer and put it all on the line. But they all know something they haven't seen. I find a gap off the screen and hit them right in between. Yeah, I got it. And I got it. Just one thing to say. Yeah, but they don't know something they haven't seen. I'm off that mean Joe Green. It got me fading. In between fantasy football podcast. All right, all right, all right. It is Tuesday, February twenty seventh, twenty twenty four, and we are officially in the stretch of the NFL offseason where we're waiting. NFL free agency a couple weeks away. The NFL draft less than two months away now. We're going to help you pass the time tonight with our first official draft of 2024. My name is Seth Wilcock, and I am joined by a man who just got back from vacationing up in the Pacific Northwest Mountains. He saves both lives and fantasy football draft capital daily. He's the dude, Scott Ryanier. Scott, you feeling rested, ready to go? I was, and then I went back to work for a couple of days, and now I'm just kind of back, not rested. But um, no, we we took a trip to a mountain town called Leavenworth, Washington. It's a great spot. It's like this weird Bavarian style town. Everything yeah. is Bavarian style. It's pretty wild. We rode the train through the mountains to get there. My favorite part, I think they, it's, it's relatively newly opened. It's a gravity roller coaster they built onto the Ooh. hillside. So you you're in a little you're in a little roller coaster car on a metal track, and you're a kid can go in front of you. So I took my daughter, pulled up on a cable. And then from the top, it's just gravity and you can, you can break and then release break and that's it. And you just, it's, it was so much fun. So little mountain coaster action. Yeah, little mountain coaster. Show. Hell yeah. Hell is, yeah. It like, well, is it one of those like low profile Johns where like you're right above the ground and like the sides are kind of open. I've seen some. Uh, for like for that a fair amount of it, the sides were very open. And I mean, we're not talking about, I mean, this is more of a mountainside than a hillside. So, I mean, on a couple of stretches, it's hundreds of feet down. Hell yeah. Um, and then some of it, but yeah, it's like, it's got, it's got circular portion, straight portion, dips, turns, put it this way. My daughter wanted me to never apply the brakes. She's very, <laughs> she's very <laughs> gung ho about it. She's like as fast as possible. And I was like, I was like, hell yeah. Hell but yeah. we got to a certain portion of it and we both were like, oh, oh shit. And we like pulled on the brakes. <laughs> That's how I gauge it. Like, yeah. there's a there's a point that's too fast for me. That's a good roller coaster. Your oh shit meter. Yeah. Your oh yep. shit meter. Yep. I love it, man. Uh, I also want to welcome in a light ranch and son of a bitch. He's the founder. About 11 different companies I think he owns or has founded and including and soon to be yours, the listener. He's Tex. He's raised the Romoff, Eric Romoff. Eric, how we doing tonight, man? Howdy. Man, howdy indeed. I'm trying to keep track of all the different organizations and entities that you are claiming I've co-founded. Uh, it's a lot, but uh, here, here at IBT is where I have some of my, uh, my funnest time. So always, always stoked to be here on a Tuesday night. Absolute pleasure to have you here with us. Our friend as well tonight on the show, bear in mind or bullshit. A lot of reports going out in the last couple of weeks, last few days, we're going to read through some tea leaves, boys. We're going to kind of see what is what, what, what is going to be fantasy football relevant. And then uh temperature check. We're going to do the big board underdog fantasy. We've kind of been working up to this here on the channel. We assessed the early ADP a couple weeks ago. I've been doing a lot of slow drafts in my spare time as well. 
Now we're ready to dive into it with y'all. We're ready to do the big board, a fast draft, 30 second clock. Um, and speaking of y'all, thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight. The IBT family, uh, this family continues to get bigger and bigger every single week. And that's because of OGs like everyone out there in the chat tonight. We got Stacy and Albert. Good What's evening. up, boys? Good to see you, Stacy. Albert, good Albert. evening, IBT. Good evening to you, Albert. Uh, it's people like Stacy, people like Albert, the regulars who are coming in, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing. Uh, that's really helping us continue to grow both here on the channel and on the website. So thank you guys so much. I hope you all had a great last weekend. Mine was productive as fuck. I got done with like work at 2 p.m. on Saturday, and I was just like, I'm going to hang stuff on the wall. H hung like five shelves, uh, deep cleaned the shit out of my house. I don't know why. I was on a roll. So uh, excited to continue that roll here during the middle of the week with you guys. Um, a couple show announcements I do want to make before we get too far into things. Um, tomorrow, Wednesday, February 28th, Scott and or myself may be appearing on Sirius XM's Fancy Sports Radio Channel 87 as part of the FSW8 Awards. Only the winners no. uh, get on. So we have no idea. One of us could get on. Both of us could get on. None of us could get on. Um, but Scott, fun to be a part of it no matter what. And just a huge honor to be nominated. Is that tomorrow? Just kidding. It's from 1 to 3 Eastern. I'll be tuned in. I've been waiting for it for a while. Uh, I had the... I, had, I was fortunate enough to be nominated last year, and it's pretty fun. I mean, if they do it the same as this year, you sit there with your phone and you listen to the broadcast on Sirius XM. Yeah. If they, if your phone rings and it's them, you won. If it doesn't, you lost. So it's pretty. It's it's. I remember it being like a, a really fun excitement. And I mean, you yeah. know, so, so many great people nominated. Like if you know, if you don't get it, somebody somebody definitely deserving did. Except for if if you get it, I'll probably maybe. <laughs> few days up no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> no I, absolutely and it's so cool because we, we've met and become friends with so many of these other award uh nominations whether that's here in the fantasy football industry over in the racing industry so congrats to everyone all around if you guys want to check that out that is tomorrow like scott said 1 to 3 p.m eastern time sirius xm fantasy sports radio channel 87 uh, part of the FSWA Awards. And also, let's not forget, folks, Draft Night Out tickets are flying off the shelves right now. Uh, this is our live draft at the Brew Kettle at the Pro Football Hall of Fame Village in Canton, Ohio, part of the Fantasy Football Expo. About 25% of our live draft tickets are gone. We still are going to have some standard room only mobile drafts. Um, but if you want to get into the live draft, go get a ticket now. The Joe Thomas Charity League already sold out, boys. That is great. That all goes for toy, uh, Toys for Tots. That, that's uh, TNT who puts that together over there, uh, Toilets for Titles. So uh, super excited about that. And uh, how about that? The first league to fill up is the charity one. That's good. That's good shit. Yeah, exactly what you're looking for. And it, it fits perfectly because this year's, at least this year's color palette for the Expo is Cleveland Browns theme, right? So yes. it's, it's perfect that Joe Thomas's division is the first one to fill. Yes. Yeah. And Scott, uh, as we kind of talked about in the meeting last night, we're also going to open up another uh, live dra draft that's going to be a charity league. This will be a mobile only one, a standing room, but, but more chances for people to get involved for a great cause there. Yeah, I mean... It's exciting because last year, I think everybody had a really good time. There were definitely, you know, some uh, lessons learned, but we yes. started planning it with only a couple of months before the event. So this year, I mean, you know, what was yesterday, February 26th, and we had a yes. meeting about it. So um, it should it should be pretty smooth this year, iron out some of those some of those glitches. But I mean, even the glitches last year were, you know, none of them were deal breakers. They were just annoyances, yeah. more, more likely inconveniences. So I think it's going to be a great event. I'm I'm pumped up, man. I'm already ready to go. Uh, we're going to have a blast out there in Canton. We always do. But we, we have some stuff in front of us right now. We have some fantasy football, NFL-related news to get to. And then we'll uh, go ahead and get in some drafting as well. But let's start out the show here with a little bit of bear in mind or bullshit. This just in. Breaking news. Man, that sounds like a bunch of bullshit to me. Bam. 
bear in mind or bullshit? Is this just NFL offseason fodder? Is this something we need to keep in mind moving forward as fancy football managers and NFL betters? Let's break it down and let's start out with Jonathan. Jonathan Brooks is the top ranked running back on Daniel Jeremiah and Bucky Brooks's big boards. Uh, also, Dan Cooper, Dr. Dan Cooper projects he should be cleared by training camp. Scott, is this uh, something we need to keep in mind? Is Jonathan Brooks going up your draft boards? Is it just off-season hype, some bullshit that uh, we got to kind of wade through? Um, I mean, it's somewhat typical February um, available, you know, news that's available to us. You know, I'm I'm not through all my prospect analysis. I've been just kind of taking my time with it. I don't like to do too much, expend too much mental effort this early. Um, just because a lot of things are going to change. We've got the combine and obviously mm-hmm. the draft. But, I mean, all said and done right now, Brooks is my, you know, it's it, it's been kind of widely said that this isn't the strongest running back class. Um, there's some depth, but not a lot of just high-end elite talent. Um, I do have Brooks at the top. And, I mean, the, I think the only thing keeping him from most people's top, or at least top two or three, is the injury. Yeah. So, I mean... I mean, you know, like we get injury news months and months away from when a player is supposedly going to be ready or cleared. We get that all the time. So it has to be taken with a little bit of a grain of salt. But again, this is the available news. And if he's cleared by training camp, that's that's really good news, Um, you know, Mm -hmm. because, you know, more so for wide receivers, but running backs too. like, I mean, starting off your rookie season in the NFL injured really puts you in 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 a bad spot kind of behind the eight ball. So if he can if he can get some of that training camp camp experience fully healthy, then you know I think he'll you know depending on landing spot all that stuff I think he'll make he'll make an impact this year. So a little bear in mind there for Scott I think here as uh, Jonathan Brooks and and let's be honest Eric Jonathan Brooks pretty talented running back we saw him score six touchdowns in a year where Roshan Johnson and Bijan were still on the squad gets the full role this last year is great. And let's be honest, Jer- J- Daniel Jeremiah also plugged in as fuck. Like, like this guy moved the sticks, usually knows what he's talking about. Um, so if the betting market was out there right now, Eric, is Brooks a clear favorite to you to go running back one in this class? I don't think so. Um, like there's there's two pieces of news here, right? Like there's the fact that guys that are in the know, like Daniel Jeremiah, have Brooks atop their board. But the bigger piece of news is is kind of like Scott said, right? Like the the reporting that we're we're likely to see Brooks be ready for training camp that's really the needle mover right and to mm-hmm. your to your question about like the betting market specifically Brooks is kind of one two or three on most people's big boards right so like he's up there but in in reality there's like this amalgam of like I don't know six or seven guys that yeah. you know if they show out in the combine if they explode in their pro day if you know someone just falls in love with them during the interview process, you can make a, a pretty, you know, pretty solid argument that you could see them going off the board first overall. So I yeah. would probably look towards the field as opposed to Brooks for mm-hmm. um, you know, in, in that particular proposition. But I mean it's it's definitely a a promising sign that, you know, there's enough confidence to report on the fact that he should be cleared by camp because Missing missing those early days as a rookie, it just it, it extends out that learning curve further and further into the season. Kind of reminds me of the 2020 NFL draft class. We had guys like JT, DeAndre Swift in that class, J.K. Dobbins, and Clyde Edwards Alaire kind of popped out of nowhere uh, just because apparently Patrick Mahomes liked him and he was the first round pick. So uh, we could see a situation like that uh, take place here in 2024. Disbanded Brotherhood in the chat. What's up, man? Thanks so much for joining us. Saying the true lottery pick in best balls right now, Jonathan Brooks. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you there, man. That he is definitely a lottery ticket. Um, going a little early for my taste compared to some of the other rookie running backs, but nonetheless, Marvin Harrison Jr. also will not be at the combine, not even going to show face at the combine, and will likely not have a pro date either at Ohio State. Eric, is this just guys being guys? Like, why does he need to? Or is this a, a red flag for you? Bear in mind or bullshit? I mean, it's not a red flag for me, right? Like, I. I'm kind of old school in that, like I I prefer to see the guys participating in the pre-draft process as much as possible. But I I think it's a perfectly justifiable decision for Marvin Harrison. Like he has it on very good accord that he is going to be probably the second, third, 
a worst case scenario, fourth overall pick in the NFL draft. He's not really going to change his draft stock by how he performs in, at the combine or how he performs at a pro day. Yeah. So I, I think it is it is certainly a defendable decision, decision but I, I like it when the guys get out there and, and really show off what they can do. But yeah, I mean, basically, Marv is just pointing to the scoreboard, right? Like there's so much good tape out on this kid that he doesn't really need to, you know, do any any more exercises or drills to to prove his point. Okay. Um, Scott, Bengals, they're franchising T. Higgins. Tyler Boyd will likely walk because of this, are the reports we're hearing. Is it bear in mind or bullshit to you that we could see an elevated role despite T. Higgins coming back for guys like uh, Isovas, Charlie Jones, the second-year wide receivers? Uh, bear in mind or bullshit that they'll have fantasy relevance despite Higgins coming back? Um, I lean towards bullshit, um, partly because I still am a huge fan of T. Higgins. Uh, you know, I mean, the salary cap went up a little bit more than I think anybody anticipated. Mm -hmm. So I think teams were scrambling, but like, like in a good way. Um, and that's, I think, why you see some of these other players we're going to talk about re regarding the franchise tag here in a minute. Um, but I mean, I think locking T. Higgins in was a good move. I think last year, you know, if you if you focus on the recency bias, T. Higgins had a very disappointing fantasy season last year, but he was also basically battling injury all year long. Um, and then the quarterback situation there was all over the place as well. You know, so I'm, I'm thinking back, you know, you, you can't just ignore a season. Mm -hmm. But when T. Higgins and Joe, Joey Burrow were both healthy, that's what I'm picturing in my head. So, I mean, I think, you know, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins are going to dominate this 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 receiving market share, um, you know, unless they were to draft someone like, say, Brock Bowers. <laughs> then that might put a dent in it. But, yeah. you know, I think those guys, I think the guys you mentioned um, are going to be peripheral pieces. You know, um, maybe maybe some some relevant certain weeks, but I'm not I'm not expecting any big jumps for any of them. Yeah, uh, I think if that were going to happen. It, we would have seen a little bit more. I mean, I can never pronounce his last name. Asovas. Um, yeah, he he. I could say flashes. that wrong too. He, he shows he showed some flashes, but like Charlie yeah. Jones didn't do anything. Um, I remember I I traded back into the fourth round to pick Charlie Jones, feeling all smart, and now it's kind of like well. And I mean, you know, just because somebody doesn't do anything in the rookie year isn't necessarily a 100% death nail, but Charlie yeah. Jones, Purdue goat. Yeah, Purdue goat. Oh, okay. good. So anyway, yeah. so now I think it's going to be the T. Higgins Jamar Chase show again. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm with you there, Eric. Any digression from you? Because like Tyler Boyd was a, a fantasy football waiver wire fodder for most of the, the last two seasons. So like, it's hard to think they will take a big step despite Osovas like showing some prowess, especially down the red zone this season. Yeah, it, it should really be more of the same for, for this Bengals offense, right? Like when everyone is healthy and available, they have one of the most concentrated uh, uh, target distributions in the entire league, uh, you know, obviously going to Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. I don't think we're going to see that change. Uh, you know, yeah, th there can be a rotation of this kind of ancillary guy. You know, I, I don't know if any of them will get quite as involved as we've seen Boyd in recent years, but even Boyd being, you know, kind of the peak of that ancillary role was hardly registering on the fantasy radar. Yep. Yep. I'm with you there. Uh, in other news, Josh Jacobs, Tony Pollard, not expected to be franchise tagged by their respective teams. Saquon Barkley, we heard an initial report that he is also not going to be franchised. And then a contradictory report that was saying, Hey, he might get franchised still. So a lot on the table still in the, in the running back market. Um, but is it bear in mind or bullshit to you, Eric, that we should be paying attention to and drafting in our best balls right now, guys like Zamir White, guys like R Rico Dowdle, who could have an expanded workload if these starters do not come back? Yeah, absolutely something to bear in mind, right? Like, especially at, at this time of year in, in best ball, like you, you are, there are scantily any situations as much that are going to present as much value as those that have some uncertainty, right? So like yeah. being willing to absorb that risk into your roster and, you know, uh, draft a guy like Rico Dattle. Zamir White, as the, as the example, you know, his his ADP is reflecting, you know, kind of a presumed increase in his workload. But going out, I mean, even the guys like Josh Jacobs or Tony Pollard or any of these guys that have been reported not to get the tag, that's going to depress their ADP. And while you can take advantage of it, you you have to, right? Like, 
if we get yeah. the news that Josh Jacobs is going to the Texans or wherever he might land, like the second they have that landing spot, you're going to see them go up 10, 15, maybe close to 20 picks on, on board. So like go out there and, and get that, uh, get that closing line value while there's still some uncertainty swirling. Scott, I just got Zamir White in the 12th round of a best ball I was doing earlier today. Would you take that value? Um, 12th round he, for a potential starter? Oh, looks like we might have lost Scott, too. I'm going to... Scott, I'm going to take... He it. really doesn't oh. like that value. All right. All right. We're, we got you back. Yeah, we got you, Scott. Sorry about oh, that. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I saw I saw everything pause. Um, no, I actually... I, I, I like that value. I mean... You know, with with Dowdle, you know his value. Sh- even even if he was in the same scenario where you're like you're assuming Pollard is gone, Dowdle didn't really do a lot last season. Yeah. Whereas yeah. Zemir White killed it at the end of the season. I mean, he killed it. You know what I mean? So, um, so I think I think you know that's that's right around the time I think he's still a value. Um, I mean, Eric brings up a good point. He's already you know he's not the same kind of deal. But I especially like the point about the free agent guy, the potential free agents, Barkley, Pollard. You know, Pollard, you could probably, you know, get a pretty good deal on Pollard right now just because he had a disappointing season. It wasn't a terrible season. It just was disappointing. I still think he's a terrible really in the red player. zone. That, that's where he was the worst. Yeah. Scoring opportunities for sure. Yeah. I, I mean, And I agree. But I, I really feel like some of that was pretty fluky. I mean, there was a there was a touchdown he didn't get late in the season where there was no way he shouldn't have scored and he didn't. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't think it's because he's not a good running back. I just think I think some of that was a little bit fluky. I think there's going to be some regression there. I think he's a really good running back, and I think if he goes somewhere where he's a little bit more of that role he was with Zeke, I think that's better for him. Um, I think he's more valuable, not necess- not not as a secondary piece, mm-hmm. but not as the primary guy either. So, I mean, I think Pollard, you know, just because he's you know might not have a team, they're not going to franchise him, and he had a disappointing season you know, that value or, that, or, you know, that ADP is going to be as low as it's going to get right around now. Yep. Yep. We will certainly get to that when we get to our best ball draft here. Um, don't want to bear the lead as Scott <laughs> said pre-show, but the Rams have re-signed to Marcus Robinson. It's a one year, $5 million deal. Is this bear in mind or bullshit, Scott? Any fantasy impact for you? I, it's bullshit for me. I mean, Kill suit you at well. I, I think that's. I it. thought it was pretty funny. Like I was making some room on a dynasty team, and I literally dropped Demarcus Robinson a few hours <laughs> before it broke that he signed this deal. So, but I don't really care. Now, I mean, you know, I think if Cooper Cup puts together any kind of healthy season, then I mean, you've got Puka. Um, yeah. I just I don't see I don't see Demarcus Robinson really having much value at all. Uh, and I mean, this this deal doesn't necessarily move the needle for me. It's a little bit puzzling to me that they re-signed him for five mil. But hey, everybody's got thirty three million more dollars yeah. in cap space. So yeah, a little Huckleberry there, a little Huckleberry there uh, of the Rams there, Demarcus Robinson. Um, love bearing my and bullshit. I appreciate your guys's uh, uh, help with that. Connor in the chat saying evening, gents. Good to see you, Connor. Thanks so much for tuning in, man. And guys, let's go ahead. Let's get to our best ball draft. Let's kick it off here with a little temperature check. Temperature check. That's really spicy. Holy s***. All right. So we're going to jump into the big board. This is the $10 uh, draft from Underdog Fantasy right now. They had a smaller one as well, a $3 buy-in. Uh, th- that went pretty quickly. That filled up. As you can see, still a lot of space here in the big board. Um, in general, Eric, when we're looking at this draft, uh, going to be in a-, a tournament format, 150 max entries for that draft size 12, 20 draft rounds, 30 second clock. Um, a 10.4% rake. Is there anything to note here for you? Um, looking at that, looking at the, the tournament breakdown, uh, the schedule, a- anything just from a general best ball sense you think our listeners should know? Yeah. I mean, nothing really like specific to the, the format or, or the style, right? At least that's, that's different from any of these larger tournaments, right? Like mm-hmm. with, with all of these, whether it's the big boards that fire up in February or you start to get some of the, um, you know, the the super flex options or even the rookie only options, these largest tournament formats on underdog, you're you're really pushing for 
those 99.9th percentile outcomes. You're really trying to yeah. have the absolute, um, you know, top tier outlier type of finish in order to take down that big prize. So, you know, to, to do that, like you have to be willing to absorb some risk and, you know, really, really go all in on stacking and correlation and taking it, taking advantage of value that, you know, might have some question marks around it. So, you know, that's, that's kind of the, the broad strategy for, for these largest tournaments on, on a, a platform like underdog. Yeah. And I don't know if we've ever truly gave a definition for best ball on the show, but it's really fantasy football that you're drafting and you're not setting your lineup each week. So, so you want people who have more upside um, and you can take a little more risk than usual. Someone like Gabe Davis, who absolutely fucks you in a normal redraft, has a little more value here in the best ball landscape. Um, also something to keep in mind, three wide receivers in this format. I think that's important to know. And half point PPR. Um, I know we do traditionally more full point PPR discussion and drafts here on the show. Um, we're going to go half point PPR and torment winner, Scott, 200 K man. What would you do with 200 K Scott? What would I do? Um, yes. boring answer, probably pay down some home equity loans. We've taken out <laughs> to do some renovations. There you um, go. Build a mountain roller coaster, my guy. What are we then, talking about? Yeah, build a mountain roller coaster and then get a luxury suite for all of us for the expo. Okay, Yo. I like it. I Just like rent it. out the entire top floor of a hotel somewhere. <laughs> As we're waiting to fill up this draft here, Eric, um, what is your favorite pick, do you think, this year? After kind of looking at the ADP that that we uh did a couple weeks ago, is there a certain pick that that is your favorite? in in most of these best ball drafts i tend to like to be towards the center of the draft um one because i think that there is a pretty clear tier break right around pick five but more more functionally speaking i i feel like you're less susceptible to being on the wrong end of runs and you're more likely to find value slipping to you when you're kind of in that core of the draft you know whatever, 12 to 14 picks apart um, each time that your your name is called as as opposed to being on the ends, right? Like I, I I like the control of going back to back, but it's it seems like you're pretty much always going best value and then yeah. reaching for yeah. a guy a couple picks ahead of, of schedule. Whereas in the, the heart of that draft, like there's so much value that ends up falling there. And specifically in the context of like trying to build these stacks or trying to build correlated games based on teams we think will face off during the playoffs. Like mm -hmm. you just have a little bit more latitude in terms of assembling those squads. Whereas you know, being 20, 22 picks apart, you, you can be kind of hindered in that regard. Yeah, it's a great point. And I, I will say my favorite drafts that I've gotten that I've done so far here on underdog this season have been from like the five, six, seven hole. And I think that's a, I definitely find myself scratching my head at the end of the first round because you do have a little bit of a tear break. You have question marks. You have Gibbs down there. What does his future look like with David Montgomery still in town? Uh, AJ Brown, can he have a, a breakout season this year with, with Kellen Moore kind of bringing back some of those, those traditional slant and in routes that we saw AJ Brown do so well on in, in 2022? A lot of question marks. Garrett Wilson, like I am the biggest Garrett Wilson guy on the planet, Scott, but fucking 12th overall, that's a lot of risk to take for, for Garrett Wilson there. So um, we did not get the 12th pick. We are in the four hole here. Uh, uh, initial feeling with that that pull, Scott? Sorry, say the question again? Initial thought, uh, feeling about the the whole, the whole four hole? I actually like the four for a lot of the same reasons Eric just mentioned. Um, I like that mid-range four or five. I mean, I like those players that are sitting there is according to these rankings. Um, and I feel like for the last few years, I've had so many drafts where I've been a back-to-back -back pick and yeah. it is kind of, you know, it's kind of fun when your pick comes around cause you're like, check this out, but then all that waiting. So I think, in, I think in this format, I think four is a, is kind of a sweet spot. Um, I, especially I think we're still in that top tier. I think we're still in that top well, tier. Well, I mean, if it played out, if it played out this way, where you got Jefferson going after CD lamb and Tyree kill. Yeah. Sign me up for that. I mean, you could, there's still That's an argument cool. Justin Jefferson's the first overall pick in any draft. Yeah. So oh, if, well, if these rankings were to hold, um, yeah, sign me up. 
CMC goes off the board at one overall. We have Justin Jefferson at two. We are up with pick number three here. Uh, is it Tyree Kale or CeeDee Lamb for you guys? We have 22 seconds. I'm going Tyree Kale. Uh, yeah. Best ball put such an emphasis on weekly upside. All right, we're doing it, folks. We're yeah, going. I'm doing it. I'm Tyreek. We're going Tyree Kale. I like the call, uh, especially like. I feel like we know what Miami offense is going to be. Dallas could add another receiver here if they're tired of the ghost of Brandon Cooks and e even worse, the, the shadow that is Michael Gallup out there. So um, we go Tyree Kill for CeeDee Lamb's coming off the board at five. Brees Hall, our guy, baby, number six, seven is going to be a Monroe St. Brown, Puka Nakua at eight. This is kind of how I've seen most of these drafts go. Nothing yeah. crazy off the, uh, off the board yet. A.J. Brown, nine. Bijan, ten. I love how fast this goes, oh, guys. This is great. I've been I doing. Love, I just love all the first round receivers this year. <laughs> Pretty much yeah. every single one of them. AJ Brown may be a little bit questionable, but every single one of the other ones, I just love them. Yeah, I'm. I, I'm with you there, man. Second round's a little bit different story. Please don't make us take Nico Collins at 14th overall. That is don't do insanity. It. I don't love Garrett Wilson at 11. Like I was kind of touching on that early. That's a lot of risk too. I, I'm not about that despite Aaron Rodgers coming back. Yeah. I've so, got the fantasy pros best ball rankings up. They got Nico down at 26. So there's a, there's, I think there's a lot of disparity with, with, uh, with Nico Collins, especially across platforms. I know FPPC yeah. is going and like, like there's a, de you know, definitely a lot of, uh, a lot of platforms out there you can play on. So I know that's changing things after Garrett Wilson at 11, it's Jameer Gibbs at 12, Jonathan Taylor, 13. I have not seen anyone go running back, running back. That's wild. Uh, there at the 12 hole. Devontae Adams, 14th. Kyron Williams, 15th. Nico there Collins, he there he is. Right. right on right on the money, Scott. It. That pushes some value our way. Yeah. And I'm Nico. not a Nico Collins hater. I, I like Nico Collins. I love that he smashed after a couple of years of meh. That is promising for other meh receivers, but just not that high. Not that. Yeah. Not a Early like, second he's got to hit his ceiling to pay off that that price tag and they could even add too that's the scary thing is they could add because they have a lot of a lot of cap space a lot of draft capital this season stacy in the chat saying will scott will take he? jordan addison <laughs> will he or won't he well I, I i think i think he will i think we'll get there uh so after dj moore in, at 17 it's marvin harrison jr devon a chan and now we're back up on the clock boys how are we Oh, shit. How are we feeling about it? Where do we want to go? We have 16 seconds. Josh Allen, Rasheed Rice, Saquon, Debo, Stefan. Throw names out there. We got 10 seconds. Saquon. I'm going J yeah, Josh I can Allen. Get Saquon. Saquon, are nah, you sure? Too early for Allen. Oh, okay. Yeah. We, went, we went Saquon Barkley. I, I don't know if that was my favorite pick there, but I feel like all those receivers were a bit of a reach, to be honest with you. Felt like a bit of a yeah. reach. That's. The, the other the other name I was I was kicking around was was Chris Olave. There's there's a non-zero chance that he makes his way back to us, but like you talk about weekly upside, I I think I think with Kubiak in town that this New Orleans offense is uh is going to be doing some pretty exciting stuff next season. I hate quarterback early, but I, I've been taking a lot of Josh Allen. I've been taking a lot of Jalen Hurts, so I'm a little bummed not to get Allen there in the second. I think I would do that. I would consider it. I put him on the thumbnail because I thought that might come back to us. Um, but, yeah, I totally understand not wanting to go there. And Scott sees other receivers now we're seeing going. Like, we love Ayuk. We love Marvin Harrison Jr., Rasheed Rice. Debo just went. But it just feels so damn early, despite it being a three-wide receiver and, like, receiver-heavy draft. Yeah, I mean – it's, I mean, who, who knows about Marvin Harrison? Like he's one of those, he's one of those prospects that you're going to have to pay for regardless of format. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but for me, it's too early for Rice. It's too early for Debo for me. Stefan um, Diggs, 25. Who is Olave going to make it back? Because that would be my, that would be my pick. Someone, someone watching the stream is absolutely drafting with us and they're just going to snipe, <laughs> snipe every single player that we put out there, right? Chris Maybe. Olave just went. Um, yeah, yeah, buddy. My pick here, if he gets to us, would be Tank Dell. I'm going to be too. honest. I, I, I know we just, we were just shitting on, uh, I know we were just shitting on Nico, but third round Tank. Oh, and he just went. All right. Tank uh, Dell's off the board. Good. Receiver the call's run. Coming Mike from inside the house. Pittman Jr., DK, <laughs> Mike Evans, Waddle. Who do you, Keenan, where are uh, we going? Throw names. We got 17. I'm I'm going for the Waddle stack here. 
I I don't mind burning a lineup on on trying to pinpoint uh, Scott presumed, and like any opposition. Miami, Buffalo. Uh, I would probably take Evans over Waddle, but I'm fine with Waddle. All right, we're going. Oh, we're going Waddle. We're going Waddle. All right, Damn, good three game. seconds. That's yeah. That's quick. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's definitely quick when I'm used to an eight-hour clock here. Maybe uh, you could just pause the draft if we don't decide <laughs> in time. Yeah, right. <laughs> that would be uh, the exceptional. No, but you brought up Tank Bell, I, and I mean, it is not that far off from where Nico went, so it is a little bit. But I just, I honestly think he has more upside. Like, I've been doing a lot of analysis on the um, 2023 rookie wide receivers looking at the first half of the season versus second half. Mm-hmm. And he only played four games because he got hurt in the second half of the season. Yeah. But he went absolutely crazy in those four games um i just i love his i love his upside and i know nico put up some massive games but i still i like tanks upside better eric uh explain the rationale reaching for jalen waddle there when we already have one miami dolphins wide receiver why you wanted to go with a second one there and a little bit ahead of adp if i may add yeah i mean it's it really goes back to to stacking and correlation that i mentioned earlier right like in a vacuum, I would I would actually prefer Mike Evans over Jalen Waddle, right? But like we're we're trying to win a tournament that has several thousand, I believe tens of thousands of entrants in it, right? Yeah. So like being able to to bink a ceiling game, you know, when they presumably face off against Buffalo in week sixteen or week seventeen and having that entire offense on your roster, like that's how you really ladder up in these pay scales. So uh, yeah. Again, all of this is speculative because we don't know when these teams are playing. But you know, we've we've seen year over year the teams that the underdog teams that are that are really getting to these you know top ten, top twenty, top fifty finishes. They're the ones that are stacked and correlated, and so you can use that as a governor to kind of steer uh, tiebreakers in in these close calls. Last thing I'll add about Waddle, if you remove his injured games last season, he was pretty close to his rookie year. So it it was a bad season compared to his 2022 standards, but not that bad overall. Let's catch people up on the draft, though. After we went Waddle, was Michael Pittman Jr., Devonta Smith, DK Metcalf, Ton ton of wide receivers going in that second, third round. Sam Laporta, Jalen Hurts, first tight end off the board at 32. Mike Evans goes later in round three. Scott was eyeing him up at pick 34. He goes Keenan Allen, pick 35. Cooper Cup at the 3-4 turn, 36. Lamar Jackson, third quarterback off the board at the beginning of the fourth round. Drake London, 38 overall. T. Higgins, 39 overall. Travis Etienne, 40 overall. I was hoping he would make it back to us. Amari Cooper, Malik Neighbors, all the way up in the fourth round. Oh my goodness, that is crazy. Guys, we're up in a couple picks, and can I throw out if he gets near Travis Kelsey? I, I love Travis Kelsey at this value. I don't know how we get away from it. Zay Flowers just went. Can you guys talk me out of it? No, I think, I mean, we were talking about this a few podcasts ago. If, if his ADP stays in the fourth round, it's almost an auto pick. Um, although I'm also eyeing his freaking quarterback lasting this long as well. So. I know. Uh, what do you, th- how do you, how do you feel about it, Eric? What do you think we do here? Uh, one quarterback is already gone. So there's a chance Mahomes does get back to us if we do skip him here and go Kelsey. So, so that's that's actually part of the fun of these best ball formats, right? Well, like, no, Kelsey, sorry, not, I have to do it. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, no, I'm I'm completely all in with Kelsey, but also, yeah, no, I, that would be my pick. Us taking Kelsey here, it actually it increases the likelihood that Pat Mahomes makes his way back because the teams that are looking and considering Mahomes now don't have his yeah. primary stacking option, or at least one of them at their disposal, right? So, Great point. we'll have to Great look at point. this team. Uh, what is it, Team 2 that drafted Rishi Rice? Rice? They yeah. Yeah. are our oh. primary competitors for Pat oh. Mahomes. That's a good point. Uh, That's but if, if he gets back there, then I think we got well, a good they have, Yeah, they got, two, they got two round. picks before us. So let's yeah. look at strategy here. Isaiah Pacheco, Trey McBride going off the board. Pat Mahomes might get back to us. It seems like we're kind of going for a more balanced team so far. Um, like it's, it's not robust running back. It's not zero RB. It's not zero wide receiver. Um, nice balanced team so far. There he goes. Ah. Pat Mahomes, 49 off the board, Rashad Smart white bitch. right before him. Uh, what are we doing? Oh here, yeah. Boys? Well, we'll take away his McCaffrey stack and take Bryce young then. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, so we're, we're going to be back on the board here. Richardson goes after Mahomes. Wow, that was early for Richardson. Stacey um, did ask the question. 
Where, where where do you want to go here, Scott? Throw out a couple names. Uh, Jaden Reed, I don't mind the price tag on Jaden Reed here, wide receiver 31. Um, I don't mind that. I also don't mind Kenneth Walker, RB13. I I hate going a second running back this early, but KW3 there, uh, staring me in the face feels nice. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind. I'd rather honestly have Addison than Reed. Um, okay. Uh, so, Eric? Uh, I would lean Addison as well. Addison, right? Like we're we're, no we're talking about Hawkinson. a rookie who came in and put up put up ten touchdowns. Yes, there's a question mark around Kirk Cousins, but I I think that we can get pretty comparable quarterback play from the combination of Kirk Cousins and that revolving door they had after him. So, like yeah. the upside with Addison. Yeah, especially no TJ Hawkinson probably to begin the year as well. We don't know what the running back situation is going to be. Addison could take a step forward. Seven of his 10 touchdowns came in eight games with Kirk Cousins. So another something to keep in mind. They had some great touchdown equity together. Mark Andrews off the board at 51 before our Addison pick at 52. Jaden Reed followed. Roma Dunze, the rookie out of Washington, 5'6 overall. Kenneth Walker, Terry McLaurin off the board. So guys, we're sitting pretty good at, at wide receiver. We do have a flex in this league. Eric, do you think we're going to continue to pound the wide receiver position depending how the board falls? Or is this when we start looking at, at potentially a running back too, or potentially even a quarterback? Yeah, it, it definitely depends on how the, the board falls, right? Um, I'm pretty comfortable waiting on quarterback, right? I kind of Thank forced you. us into taking a long, yeah. hard look at Tua, who should be available several rounds later. Um, yeah. But I mean, also like when when you talk about underdog and best ball automatically setting your your highest scoring lineup, typically those flex spots end up being wide receivers, right? So you're not really drafting for the position itself; you're just drafting yeah. for the guys that you think that can have the most points on any given week. And statistically, we usually see wide receivers slot into that spot. So I tend to be pretty pretty wide receiver and pass catcher happy for the first, you know half almost two thirds of the draft and then really just go speculate in the bargain bin to you know try to get those guys that might fall into the end zone or have someone get hurt in front of them yeah. at, the, at the running back spot calvin ridley off the board at 57 christian kirk 58 chris godwin 59 i like chris godwin i'm rising on him a little bit if evans leaves jackson mm -hmm. smith and jigba i like that pick at number 60 overall uh, and he's going to double tap on, on wide receiver. Go George Pickens, Justin Fields, next quarterback off the board at 62. Josh Jacobs. Uh, we talked about him earlier in the show. He goes here at 63. People are, are still high on Jacobs, depending, uh, despite not knowing the landing spot. DeAndre Hopkins, 64. Ty J Spear, 65. Aaron Jones, 66. How are we liking the board, guys? What are we liking right now? What, what, what seed? I'm going to be honest. I, oh, go ahead, Scott. I was just going to say, I agree with Eric. Once Mahomes went, I'm waiting on QB. Okay. Uh, you know, I mean, to me, Stroud, Burrow, that, that tier, I'm just yeah. not interested in, in, in going there. Um, you know, honestly seeing, seeing, seeing fields get drafted pushes another potential value our way, in my opinion. Um, you know, cause I, I wouldn't have taken him there. So I'm, I'm down to wait and see if it works to get Tua. you know, okay. or some of the other quarterbacks we've talked about with Tyler, Brock Purdy, we are back on the board here. Oh. Uh, 20 seconds left. Brian, Brian Thomas Jr., Christian Watson, Deontay Johnson, top of the board. Where are we going, guys? We got 14 seconds. My vote's Deontay Johnson. Uh, I like David Montgomery here as well, or Kamara. Throw names, please. I like Kamara of the running backs. Uh, I'm not I'm not big on Deontay Johnson in best ball. I like Kamara. If we're talking those, yep. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I think you should take Kamara. <laughs> 30 seconds is tight. Yeah, it didn't help. Scott took us to about 20 seconds before <laughs> before I uh, got in that we were on the clock. But yeah, I don't mind the pick of Alvin Kamara there. Um, again, we have two, like I don't love having two older running backs kind of as our, our forefront there, guys who have had injuries at times in their career. But Alvin Kamara still is going to have a shit ton, of, uh, shit ton of targets and a shit ton of receptions and a half point PPR leagues. That's fine for me. That is fine. He has the upside. And that's what we're looking for, Eric, right? We're looking for upside and Kamara has it. And he he gets to step into that into that Kubiak offense, right? Like every every running back who really popped well above their their expectation over these last couple of years have been you know uh, part of that Shanahan tree offense that just gets so much out of the running back, back position. Back on so, the clock here, like the Austin. Upside. 
Austin Eckler, Christian Watson, top the board. Um, looking at running back, what do you, what do you like here, Scott? Wide receiver, Christian Watson, Dobbs. <laughs> I just don't really like this tier of receivers, to be honest. Uh, anyone um, talking me out of Austin Eckler? Oh man, no, we shouldn't. We shouldn't do that. Eric, throw a name out. We got anything? Or I'm going Deontay Johnson. You can go Deontay Johnson. I I think he's he's a fine choice here. I have um, way too much he... exposure to him. Holy shit. Yeah. I got like 100% exposure to Deont. It's just like this tier falls off very quickly at, at wide receiver. Right at, at wide receiver mm-hmm. 40, I don't feel as comfortable, Eric. I, I don't feel like like there is a lot of upside still. There is 100% still upside, but it just feels buried at this point in this tier. Yeah, it, it really does, right? And, and one thing that's different about uh, the big board this year, as we've seen several rookies already go off the board and several rookie names as the best players available. The the ADP for rookies at this point of the year is significantly higher than it was this time last year or this time yeah. in prior years, right? So like the yeah. you know the rookies being the cheat code as a way to get cheap upside onto your roster is is no longer a viable strategy. There are still some guys you can speculate yeah. with later, but you know the the top you know five or six at each position are being drafted closer to their ceiling or at least their well above average outcome. So you can't, you can't bank on having that, that upside available to you in the later rounds like you could in years before. Everyone bought the strategy guide on the rookies. Like like everyone bought right. the strategy. They know the mods, they know the cheats. Um, can you, running, can you scroll up so we can see the whole draft real quick? Yes. Um, running, I'm running back. Running back that went off the board after we did, uh, after we took Alvin Kamara, Montgomery, Henry, Ramondre, Nick Chubb. So expect a potentially a, a late run on RB twos in the six, seven range. Joe Burrow, after we took Deontay, then it went Dak Prescott, Brian Thomas Jr., Tony Pollard, Brian Robinson Jr., Evan Ingram, Christian Watson, Justin Herbert, Jordan Love. Wow, someone already has a, a two quarterback stack there. No Dude, running backs. We, we got, got zero. Like three next to us. Yeah, the, right? the, the, the three, the three, three hole has three quarterbacks. I don't think we All need right. to worry about when it's going that way. Yeah. Somebody smacking a QB yeah. from us. Yeah, no, I'm, but, I, I, I'm feeling really good there. But there's, only, there's, there's too many people taking two quarterbacks for me to trust. Just like, oh, we'll just get the guy we want later, you know? So I know we already have two this running backs. Time. I do want to highlight be. a couple people. I'm just going to throw in our queue here. Uh, that I like as a potential another running back, even though I know we're more focused on wide receivers right here. Um, but I do like Austin Eckler potentially if he makes it back to us. James Conner, Raheem Mostert, Joe Mixon just went. went. Um, I still just don't really like this wide receiver uh, tier that we're kind of in right now. Like Tyler Lockett is potentially intriguing down the board a little bit. If you want to take the shot on Hollywood Brown, who, who's potentially going to be uh, on a new team this year as well. I like what, seeing- I like seeing Khalil Shakir get the love be up be, to be up in this group. Yeah. Seems a little high, but I like him. Yeah, I'm, Eric, I'm the same way. I just I, I'm not a big huge yeah. fan of this wide receiver group. I do like Troy Franklin from what I've seen so far on tape, but it's it's just a high price for me to pay right now for a guy we, we don't know 100 if he will be a day one pick. Could could slide into day two, and you know if if he's if he's on the Chiefs, that'd be great. You know, if he lands on the Chiefs. I mean, if we're, also, if we're talking best ball, like Eric was talking about, where the flex, you know, just having got, having bullets on, in the chamber for, for those big weeks. Mm-hmm. I mean, if Mike Williams is going to be fully recovered, um, we, he wouldn't be bad. Mike Williams. Eric, w- what are some names you like here? We're on the clock. F- Ten seconds. I, I think we can make the, the case for Mike Williams. Um, of the wide receivers, he's probably the one I like the most. And I feel pretty good about us getting Tua on the way back around. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Two is on top of the board. Yeah, good. Me team. and Eric have been in, in sync tonight. Yeah, no, I, I I'm liking I'm liking this uh th- this board to be honest with you. It's really hard for me to take Mike Williams over like Austin Eckler because Mike Williams just always fucking bones you, but in this type of format, in, in a format best- at this stage of the draft, I think he's yeah. a good spot, man. Even if yeah, he goes whenever, to, to another team too, I think he's still in a good spot. And and whenever whenever you get those floor games where he just completely bones you, you've got Deontay Johnson getting you a steady twelve points to to fill in for that, right? Like you're you're kind of mitigating those floor games, and obviously we've seen his ceiling be among the best in Tua? the league. When when I think really we, we got to go to it now. Yeah, I'll go to it here. Yeah. Okay. So to catch everyone back up on the draft, after we went with 
Uh, Mike Williams was Austin Eckler, Jalen Warren off the board at the end of the eighth round. Jacoby Myers, Corlin Sutton in the ninth, Josh Downs, Dave Njoku, and then we went to uh, and then Najee Harris, Javante Williams, another running back uh, round getting started here. Troy Franklin now off the board. Yeah, man, there's going to be one of these rookies that's going to land in in a couple good situations like the Chiefs or the Chargers, and we're going to say, damn, like I wish we were in on them, but it's a tough price to pay. Scott, at this point in the draft, what are you, you know, kind of looking at our team here? What are you looking at? Like, like, like do you think we're just continuing to take best available? Or is there a, a, a given strategy that's kind of spoke out to you here? Um, other than Correlating teams. I would probably lean more towards a best available approach. Um, it would be pretty, pretty soon here where I'd probably start just firing some running back bullets. Um, just, you know, yeah. some, not, not necessarily lottery picks, but just, you know, I think we have a we have a we have a nice deep wide receiver core at this point. Um, yes. I'm good at tight end. I'm good at quarterback for for a while. So okay, best available, but likely you know still just looking at wide receiver, running back. Um, so so here's what we're going. gonna here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna catch everyone up on the draft, and Eric, we're gonna let you go now as well. I know you have some some other uh, commitments tonight, so thanks for joining us, man. We'll catch you next time. Um, Scott, Najee Harris, Javante, Troy Franklin, Raheem Mostert, DeAndre Swift. Marquise Brown, Jameson Williams, TJ Hawkinson, Dallas Goddard. He's been a steal. I've been getting him in about the 11th or 12th sometimes. So I love that value for Goddard. Zamir White, we talked about him earlier in the show. Trevor Lawrence, Jared Goff, Caleb Williams, Tyler Lockett, Chase Brown. So the 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 run on hey, quarterback. The first rookie running back. First rookie running back. Where do you want to go here, Scott? Um, right now we have two RBs on our team. We have 20 seconds on the clock. What's sticking out to you? Um... I almost. I like, I, Devin, I, I like Devin Singletary here. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the receivers here. I'd probably go Devin Singletary. All right, we're gonna make the pick because we're out of time and I can't fight you anymore on it. And just hope um, that they don't sign Saquon. I'm gonna be honest. I, I wouldn't mind um, potentially taking a shot on Keon Coleman if he got back to us here. Um, okay. We have we have no rookies right now, and and Coleman could potentially be a first round pick, big body wide receiver, could be a potential. Uh, touchdown threat for one of these elite teams um at the back of the draft so thoughts on Keon oh Keon Coleman just yeah, went just so um we're back to the drawing board there then Scott um I can't take Jahan Dotson I'm not ready to get hurt again fuck that guy no I don't, don't really like any of these wide receivers again I know but I don't we, like any of the running back no well we're just to that point of the draft you know what I mean Jerome Ford w- would potentially be someone I would be considering here. Um, I don't mind Jerome Ford. We could also think about a second quarterback. We got Kirk Cousins Stafford on the board. We could get a Kirk Cousins Jordan Addison Stafford or stack going here. Think about that as well, Scott. Yeah, that's no, all- that's a that's that's not a bad idea, honestly. Jane Daniels going all the way to fucking QB eighteen. Do you want to go Cousins here? Probably then, unless yeah. Because like I like Jerome Ford, but I'm gonna be honest. I think we can take a, a shot at Braylon Alley or Bucky Irving on the way back. So I'm fine with like, waiting on running back. With the um, new system, with the new system that's going to be in Seattle, I'd, I think I'd rather have Charbonnet over Ford. Ooh, okay, interesting. And then a lot of good wide receivers that just aren't really kind of cracking the case. So we're gonna go Kirk Cousins. Then we're gonna go ahead and get the Dizzler on our team. Get our quarterback too. Hey, I love having stacks for both our quarterbacks. That's a job well done there, Scott. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I mean, yeah. they're two, you know, they're two, they're two quarterbacks that wing it all over the place, man. Like, yes, they'll be, they'll be involved in some high scoring games. Um, you know, Miami's defense was, was pretty decent last year. Minnesota's was not. So I just, I feel like they're both, they're both excellent best ball quarterbacks is, you know, with the strategy of waiting as long as we did. Yeah. Yeah, Didi in the chat. What's up, Didi? So good to see you tonight. Thanks for joining us. She's a, a, a best available gal herself this late in the draft. Um, Scott, I'm not going to read the rest of the picks because I don't want to exhaust the, the the audio <laughs> listeners or the YouTube or yourself. listeners. Yeah, or myself. I did just go through about 100. So um, still just kind of best available is what's going off the board. We're seeing some of these middling running backs going. Jerome Ford, Charbonnet, Chandler, Chuba Hubbard. Um, which I think is going to open us up for an opportunity. I want to take a shot on a rookie here. I'm having a little rookie FOMO. I know we're early in the season, um, but Hoob and I have, have hyped up some of these guys, uh, specifically 
I love Braylon Allen. He's still around. I would be intrigued with him or Corum or Irving. So any of those guys I'd be great with. Um, a Donnie Mitchell still on the board too. I don't, I don't hate Mitchell. Um, I'm be honest with you. I don't hate him at all. I don't hate Gabe Davis at this point in the draft either, just because I, my you know, favorite rookie here is, is worthy. Just FYI. Okay. Xavier, Xavier worthy. worthy. Mm-hmm. Xavier worthy. Not a bad call there. Um, yeah, I'll throw, throw a couple running backs here that, that I like. Um, we talked about Lloyd last week on the program. I think it's a little early for him, but we can throw him in there. Are you looking at a tight end two yet, Scott? Would you consider a tight end two? We got Schultz and Musgrave and, and Waller on the board. I, I, I don't mind waiting until we get down to like a tuck, Tucker Craft range for our tight end two. With, with yeah, no, scroll up to the top of those tight ends. Schultz, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine Musgrave. waiting for even like a Kate Otten. Yeah, yeah. Or Tucker Craft, like you said. Yeah. Okay. I just don't think uh, there, I don't think there's a lot of difference in that range of tight ends to, to take one right now. I I mean, as much as I don't like to be like, I'm definitely going wide receiver with my next pick. Yeah. I yeah. definitely probably want to go wide receiver with our next pick, you know. I agree. It's been it's been a while since we've attacked wide receiver. I think we need to go back there. Uh Mike Davis RB from UK. I think you mean Ray Davis, Stacy, in the chat. Mike Davis. Mike Davis retired. Quad came. Yeah. Quad yeah. Came we- <laughs> We will not forget about him. Tight ends going. Here's the 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 run of receivers. We uh, just, where are just mother. I want to worthy. Do you, where do you want to go here, Scott? At, at receiver, I honestly oh. kind of want to take Braylon Allen and maybe maybe we settle for for someone uh, like a lad. Yeah, McCombie I mean, or an Adam Thielen on I the like, way back. I like Roman Wilson. He'll still be there. So I'm good with Braylon Allen. Uh, we're taking Braylon Allen. I got to get my exposure. Zero wide like, receiver, baby. <laughs> uh, the good thing is we already have five wide receivers. No, I you know? mean, that's the thing that, I mean, I think I, I wouldn't be panicking at all. We, I think we utilized the weight on QB strategy um, yeah. and, and getting a guy like Kelsey in the fourth, we utilized getting, I think a solid set of five wide receivers yeah. um, in best fall. So I'm, I'm, I'm not panicking at all about our QB running back infatuation in the last four rounds. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. I am with you there. Uh, I just think not- Braylon Allen has more of a chance to to hit than, than those, than the wide receivers we were looking at. I just think the, you know, the, the probability is higher. Would you go, can we go Adam Thielen here? If he's still here, can we get the sure. old head in the lineup or I know you like Roman Wilson too, but it's, it, it's a lot. It's, it's high, high price for Roman Wilson. It is kind of a high price. I'm down with Adam Thielen. Please don't select Quentin Johnson, please. Okay. No Quentin. Jo- I didn't know if you would want you, you don't accidentally want, select him. You don't want the insurance for uh, no. Mike Williams in case Williams no. is back and gets hurt. No, you just okay. I'm out. So. I'm. I've, I've never been in on Quentin Johnston, so I'm not going to start now. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Uh, we're going to go with Adam Thielen. I'm going to hope guys like Malachi Corley, Corley, um, or potentially someone like uh, uh, yeah, that's probably it. that's who I'm My hoping. Guy Jalen Polk, baby. That's who I'm hoping comes back for us. Beat him at the buzzard, Adam Thielen. Yeah, Jalen Polk wouldn't be bad. Who was hyping him up? We didn't get worthy. I know, right in front of us. That uh, that would be hilarious if someone is watching this stream and absolutely, absolutely sniping us because it feels hey, like. I mean, man. it's a mock. I mean, it, more power to you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this is supposed to also be really fun. Yeah, yeah. No, I, it's fun I, to I, snipe I, people and watch their reaction when you snipe them. That's fun. <laughs> A fun thing to do <laughs> it is a mock but at the same time it is you know this is a live entry so if we do win the two hundred thousand, no no I, I yeah i misspoke when i said it was a mock but um but no i like you know we're always looking the the edges in fantasy football are have been dwindling as the information yeah. age has skyrocketed so if the edge is watching us and sniping us then go for it <laughs> yeah, that would be tough to watch someone do it and, and still run your own draft as well. Um, a lot of tight end, a lot of tight end twos going now. Michael Mayer, Luke Musgrave, Schultz went the last round. Pat Fryermuth, Waller. Now we're kind of seeing this uh, ancillary group of of quarterback twos: the Rogers, the Baker Mayfields, uh, the Matthew Stafford's going as well. Your favorite guy, Quentin Johnston, off the yes. board. Scott, uh, his yeah. value our way. Thirteenth, <laughs> thirteenth round for Quentin Johnston. Yeah, no, I mean honestly. It probably would be fine to take Quentin Johnson this late, but <laughs> um, let's throw oh, Roman yeah. Wilson and Corley in, in our in our queue. I think they're two of our favorite rookie wide receivers. Any interest in Demario Douglas in this format? Because with it not, not being really. full PPR, I, I can't get behind them. 
no 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 he's he's a you know mid-level floor low ceiling guy yeah i i think this is the time that we we're kind of going to start taking some uh some shots on some rookie wide receiver scott i think it's potentially falling our way unless we get sniped here in the next two picks which you know you never know with us well we've got two guys queued up so hopefully they don't both go stacy saying sniping is fun yeah we probably got stacy over there in the in the best ball with us um deshaun watson all right so we're gonna get a couple of our couple of our uh, rookie running backs or rookie wide receivers who do you like the best you like roman over corley i, I corley's the yak king he he falls into a guy i thought you would like a lot I do like him. I do like him. I'm like I said. I'm I'm not done with my with my prospect analysis. I'm not as familiar with some of these guys as other ones. Let's do Corley. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure Roman Wilson's not getting back to us? I'm you, doing you, you do. solid. I'm doing Roman okay. Wilson. I, I think Corley right. is a better shot getting back to us just based on ADP. No, that's a good there. point. That's a good point. So oh uh, yeah, I, I'm going Roman Wilson. I am a little higher on Corley, but I like them both a lot. And this is a great time in the draft. Like I really like the wide receiver value falling to us right now, Scott, because we are seeing some, some promising young rookie running backs go this round in the 14th. Bucky Irving, uh, Audric Estamine, uh, and then Marshawn Lloyd as well. But like to get well, some of this high upside receivers feels great here. No, and I mean, I think that it played out pretty well for us just because the reason we went four straight rounds without a wide receiver is because we didn't force ourselves to take a wide receiver. And yep. I think we got a lot better value with those picks of Kirk Cousins, Singletary, obviously yeah. Tua. Um, and now, you know, and then some of it is just vibes. Some of it is just like, <sighs> yes, I will. It, it is like this group of receivers looks better to me. I'm more excited. Whether I'm right or wrong, yet to be seen. I've had success in fantasy football. So, you know, um, but but I mean, I, that's why that's why a stretch of, of four like that without a wide receiver. That's why you don't force it. You don't force a yes. position, you know, Yep. like Dontavian Wicks. I would not, you know, that's too, that was way too high for him for me. Oh, you know, we, oh I, yeah, absolutely. So. Um, We did just have Jalen Polk go. So we're going to get Corley here and yeah, I love taking like, yeah, take him. I, I love taking the upside here all the way down in the 14th, 15th round. Like this is when we're taking our shots and it feels better if these guys come on and they're the Quentin Johnson of this year or, or worse, you know, well, there's someone who doesn't even see the field. And it, I, I mean, deliver this, that for this price at this stage of the off, uh, the off season, like we already talked about it earlier that we really like, as of right now, that one of four or five, maybe even six running backs could be the number one running back. So yeah. there's no sense in paying a high price right now for a running back. It's kind of the same with the receivers once you get past the top three. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, you know, we there could be a lot of moving and shaking. So taking some later dart throws on some guys that could be in that range. Um, you know, I, I think that that's the way I typically try and do it. Yeah, yeah. And the receivers really feel like they thinned out quickly there. Uh, the only one I like on the board, and a guy I actually, I, I'll admit, when we were doing our senior bowl rankings, I didn't have him. I had him ranked very lowly in my wide receiver senior bowl rankings. And, and then I watched more on him. Uh, that's Brendan rice. He's actually, uh, related to Jerry rice. If, if you would not believe, I believe it's Jerry's kid. Um, so, you know, you, you, I like the lineage. I like the tape at USC the last couple of years as well. So, uh, potentially someone I'm going to throw in the queue there. And like, I don't love these wide receivers here. Um, other than taking some shots on some rookies, I don't mind, but like, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, Jalen high. I wouldn't mind, but like, I don't no, want to. I mean, if, if, I were, if I were to take from this list, I would take another shot on a rookie and it would be probably the guy that Zacharyson has been talking up and that's Malik Washington. Okay. Malik, we were Washington. Going, but we just went two straight wide receivers. So we're not, we have some, you know, we have some uh, flexibility here. Yes. We don't check the, go back to the tight ends. Yep. So tight ends here. We are kind of getting into this next tier. If we want a tight end too, our guy, I like our guy. Craft is there, baby. If if Craft waits for, oh, they're going. We got the run of tight ends. As you say that, we're getting sniped down the ass right now, Scott. He's still oh. there, man. He's still there. Oh, Hunter Henry, another tight end. Holy He's still cow! There. Holy cow! Can we make um, it? We got what? Five picks? Four picks? Four picks. Tucker Craft. Four picks. Yeah, we need a tight end two here. We need a tight end two. Get us, get us Tucker Craft. I, I like Tucker, and if he goes, oh man, I'd probably. I don't honestly, mind no fan. 
I'd wait for Fant because I'd be fine with Brevin Jordan, honestly, at that point. Yeah, no, that's I, a good point. I, I just would rather wait if we don't get Tucker. I don't, Tucker wanna, I don't want to fall victim to the rankings I'm looking at in, in front of me. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're like, oh, I got to take him because he's ranked there. Also, some running backs and considerers we're getting later in the draft. I want to add to our queue. A.J. Dillon, who've touched on him a couple weeks yeah. ago. A.J. Dillon could be a riser. Will Shipley. Uh, I like Will Shipley coming out of Clemson as well. Um, their potential running backs to keep in mind. Your guy, Keaton Mitchell. Uh, what are your thoughts on Keaton Mitchell right now? I think he's a great late late round best ball dart throw. I mean. Electric. Show, electric he, player. Oh, he is. If he can stay healthy. I mean, he's, you know, Devon, cheap Devon A-chan. A- we did it. We did it, Scott. We, we got Tucker. We got Tucker Craft here. You know. in the, yeah. Wow. How about it, man? Tucker Craft comes. W- w- we're going to pull up the board for a minute just to look at that absurd. As soon as you... S- mentioned going back after a tight end we saw uh four tight ends go in five picks and it was not tucker craft and and i like tucker craft more than all those tight ends other than uh, tyler conklin i like a little bit not as much as craft but yeah i'm very i'm very happy with this this draft we're getting a lot of the guys that i've been targeting in my own drafts like corley like braylon allen like tucker craft like kelsey i'm thrilled with this draft scott yeah no i mean i mean it kind of set the tone with once we got Kelsey in the fourth, you know, yes. it gives you, it just, it, again, it's a little bit, it's a little bit vibes, but like to get him in the fourth and not pay it as a extreme premium for him. And then to not have to worry about that position until now. when we get Tucker craft. Yeah. It just frees you, it frees you up to, to really, to really build at other positions. So um, where are we at now? So we are we're now coming back around. We are all the way down into the 17th round. Uh right now on our roster, just our construction to check in. We have two quarterbacks, we have four running backs, uh got like eight wide receivers, two tight ends. What are you thinking here, Scott? Because um we're seeing some quarterbacks go. Bryce Young's on the board, but I'd rather just wait and take a shot on like JJ McCarthy in a couple rounds. Who yeah, are, I would who, do. In, who in our queue do you like? That we have, uh, we got 18 seconds. We got Rice, Hyatt, Washington, AJ Dillon, Mitchell. Who's sticking out? Um, I think I would. I, I might take another flyer on the rookie on Shipley. Shipley's going. We take him. Will Shipley off the board there? Um, I, I have no Will Shipley exposure yet, so uh, happy to get him, man. Like he's a receiving threat, so he can get on the field here potentially early in his rookie year. That's kind of the fun thing about like this running back class, Scott. While it's not like as high upside as like premium rushers, there's a lot of guys like Lloyd, like Brooks, like Will Shipley who are damn good pass catchers. So like, it, I don't mind taking the shot here, 16, 17th round. Yeah, no, that's. That's what these rounds are for, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And it's why if, if if Keaton Mitchell were to get back to us, I doubt it. But yeah. he's another guy I'd like to just have on my have at the end of my bench in a best ball format. Yeah, I was thinking we were going to set a queue and knock it through this all, Scott. But we we got three rounds left. We got a little bit of time here. If as long as you do, I th- I think we can. Uh, I'm we good. Can... Yeah, I can finish it out. Awesome. Awesome. We appreciate everyone in the IBT family riding with us as well. If you guys have any thoughts on these later picks, let us know. Who, who should we go with? We got a couple guys in the queue. If there's people in the queue we haven't highlighted, I'll, I'll show you some of the players available. Let us know. I mean, I'll, I'll take whoever you guys want to. We'll go to the listener, Scott, see what they think. Yeah, I'm down for that. I really wish Dobbins hadn't gotten another ma- major injury. Sad to see Dobbins oh. score down the list. Oh, it really and is. That we're, we're like, I think we'll take Keaton Mitchell over him. Miles Sanders is this far down on the list, Scott. We're in the fucking, what? The, we're in the 18th round, Scott. And like, I don't uh, even know if I want to take Miles Sanders. I want nothing to do with Miles Sanders. Man, that's so sad. He was, I used pen- to be, I used, I was a big Miles Sanders guy, but it's just like, it's, I mean, yeah. He absolutely screwed you last year. Oh yeah. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, Miles Sanders, Bryce Young, the Carolina stack, they go here late in the 18th round. And a couple of our rookie wide receivers we had in our queue, Brandon Rice and Malik Washington, they go. So yeah, not great. Not great there. Um, people like Javon Baker a lot. He's more of a deep threat. Um I, I'm not in love with him as much as everyone else. I don't mind Noah Brown 
down here either. I think Noah Brown has some upside, but I think if AJ Dillon falls back to us, we kind of have yeah. to take AJ Dillon, right? Yeah, I think you're probably right. Just based on the, even just the possibility he goes somewhere and as a primary role. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. That's wow. Um, looking at, at quarterback threes here. Oh, uh, we did have JJ McCarthy go. That's, that's a fucking bummer. Um, if we want a quarterback three, we're probably gonna have to do it. We could probably do it with our last pick. We could take a, sh- probably take fucking Kenny Pickett or Flacco, you know, just yeah, I mean, know. at this point, there's not really, I mean, you know, obviously I'm a Husky, but I, I'm going to wait till I see it with Penix. with Penix. Yeah. No, no danger Russ for you. No, we ha- hashtag let's ride. Did you see that interview though, where he was, he was revealing some details about the, that whole situation of him getting benched. I did. Pretty, I did not. Wait. I've read some of the reports. We're going to take AJ Dillon here. Okay. Mitchell just went in front of us. Um, but no, pretty juicy stuff, huh? I mean, he just kind of explained it that, you know, what, what we basically already knew that, you know, yeah. he was, who was he, yeah. who was he, uh, Brandon Marshall was interviewing him. Okay. And okay. he just, he, he said they came off two straight wins and they were like, we need you to do this or we're going to bench you. And he's like, I'm not doing that. I'm not setting that precedent. Yeah. yeah. Like no way I'm doing that. Um, and then they apparently Sean Payton came back later and was like, pretend that never happened. Pretend we never discussed that. Wow. Um, wow. But yeah. What do you, what do you want to do here with this pick Scott? Um, <laughs> Check out the comment real quick though. Jeff oh, T. For, for, okay. For, we got Jeff T. Let the record yeah. be know I'm picking from the five bot and absolutely sniped worthy because you said you want him. You're welcome. Oh no. Way. Love it, man. Are you love serious? It. Jeff T. We got an infiltration in this. That's wow. Not, hey man. Like I said, Use whatever, wow. whatever advantage you want. Jeff T, <laughs> what a fucking savage mode. Jeff yeah. T, I thought that that was just circumstance. Wow, that is crazy fucking shit. Um, and he got to watch me say, oh, I want it worthy like five times. Uh, yeah, what worthy do you want is to probably going to be one of my flag planner guys. What do you want to do here, Scott? We got 18 oh, seconds. Oh, God. Um, JK? seconds. Ugh, disgusting. <laughs> I think that's wide gonna... receiver, real quick. Oh, oh, Scott, let's take thrash. Oh, I, I went JK. Sorry, okay. I, I, I'm fine I, with him. We'll see. Wow, I mean, so I, I am absolutely okay. So we got some shit to catch up on here. First, we got Teron and Dave joining us in the chat. Dave, what the fuck's up, man? Good to see you, buddy. Saying hashtag let's ride. Um, Stacy, <laughs> just mind blown that Jeff T in here. I'm watching Lost right now, Scott, and they're like infiltrating the Lost camp by like putting other people who weren't on the plane on like the camp acting like survivors. I just feel like we just got like Scott's another. Wait, Scott. you're watching Lost right now while we're doing yeah. this best ball draft? No, not what you know, that you is know but impressive, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> almost more impressive than Jeff T's team. A- after we get done here, we got to look over Jeff T's team and roast him a little bit cuz I love it, man. I don't care if it was our if he sniped us. I think that's great. Jeff T, if you're going to be in Canton, Ohio in a couple months, come to draft night out, man. Let's have a fucking time. I don't know if you're here earlier in the show when we talked about it, but we host a live draft party. There'll be about 200 people there, brews, a little whiskey. The other, uh, the other funny thing about this is if Worthy, you know, let's do range of outcomes. If Worthy goes ham as a rookie, we'll have this moment <laughs> to remember back to as well, as, as will Jeff. <laughs> yes, 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 absolutely. Uh, but Jeff, yeah, we need to get you out there a draft night out, man. That's that's absolutely hilarious that you uh, you, you were sniping, sniping us in there. Um, last round, I think we either take a shot on a tight end three or a quarterback three, Scott. Yeah, let's, take, let's just get our kicker now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the one thing I, I think fucking... probably, probably just grab a QB three. Yeah, I mean it's it, it's 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 Kenny Pickett here. We just saw Russell Wilson finally go. I mean, you know the game. drill. This is one QB league. It's was it twelve team? Like, yeah, there's going to be waiver fodder with QBs. Yeah, so it's not absolutely crucial that we do. Um, yeah, ooh, well. Don't... Dulcich, that's an interesting one. Yeah, Greg Dulcich has been uh, – I saw our guys from JWB Fantasy Football put out a couple things. Um, put a couple things that he likes Dulcich as his last He's just one of the under-the-radar guys that got hurt, had a great rookie year. He could go all trade yeah. with Brighton's this year. We'll see. 
Yeah. I, oof, uh, yeah, I think, I don't know. I'm not, not liking it. Not liking the, the board so far. You just um, take the next for my, my UW ties, man. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. I don't know if he's going to start right away. I don't know either. I almost think Bo Nix has a better chance of starting. I don't like Bo Nix either, but we could take, if Kenny's there, we got to take Kenny, right? For the Berg. For the boys, I mean, like, you know, and you're going to want to make waiver moves at some point. So, well, keep in mind, no, no in-season transactions here on Underdog. So, oh, I'm, I'm, I had my mind in a different. Yeah, format. sorry, Never you're more. in redraft mode still, Scott. Um, yeah. So, well, there, there, there are best ball leagues where you can make. Yes. Yes, yeah, certainly, certainly. But not, an, I mean, Underdog is set up to be set and forget. Literally. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Michael Panix Jr. just went as well. So, uh, oh, Dylan Lobby's here. And this, and I love Dylan Lobby. Grab He's Dylan gonna... Lobb, then. <laughs> uh, I mean, should we just grab a QB? Fuck that. Yeah, you got to grab Kenny Pickett if he's here, I feel like. If he gets That's all. Oh, so Bo Nix just went. Kenny Pickett for the win, boys. Sure. Let's go. He even going to play this year? Okay. Uh, Kenny Pickett for the brand. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> We got Dave saying shout out JWB. We got Jeff yeah. saying I'll be out of the country, can't make it to Can. Thanks for the invite though, dude. I'm sure whatever you're doing, you out take of the a country. vacation on all his underdog winnings. <laughs> yeah, for real, <laughs> fucking sniping us. I'm, I'm sure underdogs. Hopefully they're not. They're not. Yeah, that, that, will, that moment will forever like be attached to Xavier Worthy for me now, and that's fun. Yeah. No. That that you know is. I mean? That's cool. yeah. It, that's priceless. We're gonna have to tell Eric about that too. He's not gonna believe us after. <laughs> dipping out on us earlier i love i love stacy's reaction holy fuck <laughs> <laughs> i mean it makes sense though like it, it, we were in the lobby for a minute there was time to join and hey he, he just happened to get the the pick right ahead of us so yep. jeff d fucking it was, i mean that's the thing it was a little surprising to see where they go the pick right before us at that stage so yes oh, that's great yes uh all right let's go ahead Let's look at this. The one we just know nope, that's a different one. All right. Let's pull this one up here. Um, let's check back at the draft here, Scott. We'll reflect on our team quickly and then get out of here. We'll also touch on Jeff's team quickly. He was at the five slot. Um, yeah. So only really sniped us, <laughs> I think, in Xavier Worthy when we were talking about him. So uh, we were talking about Jonathan Brooks a little bit before that as well. So not too bad from our guy, Jeff. What do you think of, of Jeff's overall team? A lot of, uh, a lot of, he must be a Texas guy. He's got a lot of Texas Longhorns on his team. Um, let's see. He's got like CD Lamb, Lam, IU. First, first three receivers are solid. I think James Cook is a decent running back to wait on and get in that range. Um, I actually like the 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 Dak Purdy made by a little early, but the way QBs were going. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's the other thing you got to pay attention to. You might think, well, I'm going to wait. Till this round on QB, yeah, you gotta pay, you gotta pay attention because all of a sudden, even the guys that you just assumed would be there later gone. Yeah, so I kind of like the Dak Purdy back to backs. Um, I think that's good value on Najee. And who did he get after that? Did he get Brooks? He was the one that got Brooks. Yeah, he got it? Brooks. Yeah. I don't mind the lottery ticket there. That's, that's pretty good value there. He obviously got the wide receiver one, Xavier Worthy. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I think it's. Ooh, and I do like I do like Jatavian Sanders, man. I know Brock Bowers is gonna get all the fucking love, but um because I got to I, I watched that guy play against the Huskies and he is a he's yeah. a beast. Yeah, yeah. He got Ayuk he's saying he didn't want to wait on Purdy. Uh and Dave's saying getting sturdy on Purdy. And something I want to I want to point out that you said, Scott, I was glad that you guys uh were on me about the quarterback position because I almost got a little bit lazy amidst of hosting this show that I wasn't looking at quarterbacks kind of when you said, oh, two is the top of the board. Like, we need to go now because look at this team over here, man. They were waiting and waiting and waiting on quarterbacks. Caleb Williams and Drake May are there and, and JJ. Like, they went after all four. They got all four rookie quarterbacks. They got yep. Penny's. They got JJ. They're going to get one of them. Um, one of them will hit. Yeah, yeah but but definitely ballsy to go, you know, to go, to go that route. So I'm, I am glad that you pointed that out to us. Um, let's check out our team, though. Let, let's check out our build here. At the quarterback position, we got Tua, Kirk Cousins, Kenny Pickett. Running backs, uh, really like this stable of running backs despite waiting as long as we did. Saquon, Alvin, Devin Singletary, Braylon Allen, Shipley, A.J. Dillon, and J.K. Dobbins. 
great running back core there. Uh, wide receivers, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, Jordan Addison, Deontay Johnson, Mike Williams, Adam Thielen, Roman Wilson, Malachi Corley, a great mix of, of, of both veteran experience and some rookie upside there. And then Travis Kelsey and Tucker Kraft at the tight end. We got, we got both the TK initial tight ends. <laughs> we did. How do you feel about this team overall, Scott? More of a balanced uh, approach, you know, wait, I say if there was one draft strategy, we did uh, apply here. It was, uh, late quarterback, late round quarterback. But other than that, pretty standard across the board. Your well, thoughts? I think that that strategy worked out real well with, um, you know, like I said, I'm not as familiar with best ball. So like, as far as the strategy of taking Tyreek and Waddle, that's a little bit more foreign to me. You know what I mean? In just regular redraft, but Eric explained it and it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, I mean, having Tua be the guy that that ended up falling to us with both those players, I think that was big. I mean, Saquon, if he's somewhere and he's healthy, he's a first round running back. So I think getting him where we got him, you know, I think that that was And I mean, Kelsey, I mean, I figured by now, like, because we talked about this before the Super Bowl, how I know I thought it was round and that's crazy up. and it's going to go up. And it's yeah. like, you know, I mean, to get him in the fourth, I think it was was big. Mahomes so I like it. I mean, we have a good crazy. with both receiver and running back. We have a good mix of you know rookie flyers in a way, and you know some safer safer options like our like AJ Dillon's a great yeah. Hey, Will Shipley totally bombs. Okay, well we got AJ Dillon, um, who you know hasn't been great, but uh, the the pr- the speculation is that his situation is going to change. Um, so I like it, man. I'd be I, yeah. I'm happy with the way it turned out. What I love about our running backs is it feels like we might have got a Houston Texans starting running back, which is valuable to me because maybe Saquon Barkley ends up there in free agency if he's on the move. And if not, maybe they just re-sign Devin Singletary to a cheap deal unless they go after like Josh Jacobs or Tony Pollard. So I'm feeling feeling really good about that, man. And I, I really like this draft overall. I, I appreciate the IBT family riding with us as well tonight, Scott. Uh, just great fun here. Great fun all around. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun. Jeff punking us. I mean, very, very <laughs> memorable night. Th- thank you to everyone in the chat. Stacy, uh, Dave, w- w- we had Didi in the chat, Connor, Disbanded Brotherhood, Albert. So much good, good discussion all around. And uh, if you guys enjoy this type of content, please subscribe to the channel. Come back, hang out with us again. We have fun like this every Tuesday evening, 9.30 p.m. Eastern time here on the IBT podcast. The audio version is out the next day. And, of course, we have a lot of PGA and NASCAR content coming for you right now as well. Um, Scott, final thoughts on, on tonight, man, and uh, anything you want to leave the viewers with as we head into the first weekend of March 2024. Hold on. I'm just replying to Jeff in the chat. Watch your back. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, you know, if you're if you're nerdy like us and you enjoy the Combine, enjoy it. But don't yes. read too much into it especially now that, you know, there's an influx of GPS data. So how important is the combine actually going to be? But it is exciting. It's something that it pertains to football. It's one of yeah. the first kind of major things that in free agency. So enjoy it. Um, I mean, other than that, you know, on the flip side, if you if you need a break from football, take it, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. And if you want to tune into Sirius XM tomorrow from 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern, it potentially, potentially, hear one of our voices on that radio show uh winning an award that'd be cool yeah absolutely man um pleasure being here with you scott and, and good luck to you tomorrow man i, I i'm honestly rooting for you i i really hope you too, come, man. C- come home with the football writer of the year you deserve it man and uh uh bigfoot lives so many the, bigfoot shirt i like it there we go there yeah. we go all around good vibes here on the IBT podcast, guys. Thank you so much. Jeff, watch your back. You Keep your head on a fucking swivel, Jack, you sneaky son of a bitch. Let me tell you what, buddy. Um, great fun with everyone, though, tonight. Uh, enjoy the combine. If you want more on the combine, we actually did a video, a preview of it last week with some potential risers and fallers. We talked about some of these rookies we drafted tonight. So check that out. That's back in the catalog. Um, until next time, though, guys, have a great weekend. Be safe out there. Be kind to one another. Be nice. You know what to do. Keep it in between. See ya.